the deja vu. Red Devils turning off the bands here on the defense. Now, Black Dragons have had a change on their squad. Same for Red Devils. You'll see that as we head into the matchup. But which one will Devils remove first? Thatcher. Okay. Cut. Please tell me he's going to be in play. I, I really like seeing these, you know, operators put into action ASAP. Second. Glass. Glass or will it be a hard breacher? I'm expecting like a Habana removed here. Would make sense. It really depends just how Black Dragons are comfortable with this sort of attack. And Glass. Okay, there we go. That's the second option. So all hard breachers are available, unlike our previous catch. Very different scenario, and even in the uh, in the game in which two hard breachers were banned, it was still attacker sided, which doesn't make any sense for a clubhouse game. But hey, yes, I see. He's showing me the picture now. For anyone, confused. yeah, it's, it's Bret Hart. He, I, I, yeah. Well, there goes Maestro. Echo and Maestro. Yep. Leaving Mira available. It's a little outside the norm, considering it's usually Echo Mira. But yeah, I mean, we saw in that in the ban rate, it's forty six percent ban rate on Mira. Now, in our first two matches, Mira was banned. Yep. So that's gonna add up to it. And as I mentioned before, the the ban rate is calculated over every single series. Of course, every single best of one. Whereas the pick rate is over every single round. Yep. The more rounds that are played with a certain operator, the more that they're going to be added um, on the board. Of course, have more selection percentage to them. But there you go. That is round number one. And we're going to start off downstairs with No Mira in the, the basement in church. Doctor being played after. here by Brow. And not surprising at all, Midi's actually running the client. So not surprising. Well, downstairs defense. Uh, so Hibana left available, yet not being taken. You're preferring Moringa taking the Mav and then GDN taking the Thermite. I mean, Church take with Monty or Dirt Tunnel push with uh, Monty. Right. Possible. It's it's an old school playstyle, right? With some with some flavor to it, having the the Maverick and the Zofia to stun lock. But there's many options to play around this. And yeah, you can tell. You can see one of the extra bonuses that Kai clings to the table with that TSG or TCSG 12. Uh, the wall on the side is not reinforced, so watch out. There's a buck on the Zofia. Uh, that has turned sour for a lot of teams. And they're going to reinforce it. Thank you very much, Midi. They're going to dual reinforce on this, I believe. And it makes so much more sense because it's just... Please. Actually, dual reinforcement on this on this wall makes much more sense than even the triple reinforcement. Because, hey, you're bringing one, one operator for the heart breach. You can actually use the, the third one to kind of fight against them. And we've seen it done so many times with Shotgun, Smoker, Mute. But it's going to be triple reinforcement. Yeah, well, obviously, bringing the Bandit and the Cod. Might as well use them. Well, Moringa entering in through Strip Hall. And they're not going to be encountering any kind of, I guess, stringy roam game that we've been seeing for a while now on Clubhouse in the last game. Between FaZe and NIP, this time around, everyone playing a little more standard. A little more reserved, a little more defensive. And again, shocking given the bans, but the scenario in which that uh, it makes the most sense playing on Clubhouse, especially defending downstairs. And you've got Moringa trying to open up the hatch while being electrocuted by the Electro Claw. Shocking. It's a lot of damage taken onto the Legion playing inside of Blue. Oh man, Moringa. It's taken so long, so much to destroy this. Doesn't seem like he's got it as down pat, as, as down pat, sorry, as the Mavericks we saw in game number nope. one. He's not gonna be able to, to open up another hatch with this. Nope. Oh man, that's so much. One and a half left, C4 being thrown out, and actually Hugsword is fairly low on HP now in the Monty. A hit has taken a bit of damage um, off Splash, but it's not a big problem. The Monty is really the thing that you need to deal with. There's a small hole that you can use here to fire into the side where uh, a bro would be kind of sitting or there would be the bandit, but everything's going to get preset and ready uh, right now. It's definitely a huge advantage for 
the attack of the defense, but the attacking side, Ponico, find the kill. Hit will get taken out. Still, at least we're hoping that the Legion has done the work and just sitting back. What is the problem doing there? They'll just walk right into it. Velvet trying to chuck the C4, and GDN just comes in and find another one, and now he's going to plant behind the black box. Midi will find one kill on a panico. Diffuser is going to get set in just a couple seconds. PZD with one more, and it's only VNX alive. He'll spot one in the back with the armory, playing behind the green box, but the Monty comes in. will stop him dead in his tracks. He'll find one kill. PZD as he peeks down the hallway. Moringa is ready, and VNX will go down. I don't think this round should have ever gone this way. No, and I mean, we talk about hard breachers a lot on Clubhouse, simply because whether they're banned or available and how they're deployed really does dictate how a round should play out. This round, however, had nothing to do with hard breachers. It was a Montane on like two HP, who just pushed in and was a human wall and GDN being an all-star on the Thermite overruns Church. And at that point, Red Devils have no response whatsoever. It's tough to see like little to no reaction from Red Devils. As soon as they lost hit inside of blue, no one on Red Devils responded and tried to retake an angle or at least pressure from the Church door into Arsenal. They just allowed Hugzord and GDN to push in get the plant down. There was not a lot of resistance on that church door. I also got a question where Hit was putting Legion mines. There was no Thatcher, so there's no way they just got dispersed from above errantly by a random EMP detonating above. Um, and there's no Legion mine in any of that strip through church hallway, through moto, through church door, inside site anywhere, a default plant sites, nowhere. And all it would have taken was one Legion mine to down off Hugzor. Yeah, and, and I really have to, I don't want to say it, but like take offense to the position of the Valkyrie. She just didn't care about the Monty. I'm like, yeah, maybe you're not the one that has to deal with him per se, but you know there's going to be somebody behind him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's having a blast. VNX just, uh, this is the most fun I've ever had in this Rainbow Six Siege here. He's doing a dance for us. Come on, baby, tell me what's the word. <laughs> oh, my. That's a great song, by the way. Corn? Never heard that in my life. What? Really? Word up. It's a great song. I'll do, we'll have a listen when, when we get back. Okay. Uh, that's not an obscure reference, okay? Corn is a pretty popular band. Don't sue me for that. Moringa will start opening things up here. And interesting that he opens the, the side, the, the center first and takes damage through it. Whereas just starting off on the side is fine. You just have to use your blowtorch on exactly the edge where he's doing now. It actually saves you quite a bit. You don't have to open the center. And he would have saved like mm, around 30% of that, of that charge. Um, and we saw that in game number one on bank. Well, he gets the hatch open a little bit quicker, but I don't think he has two and a half tanks. No, that's not enough. Two and a smidge left inside of that last tank, and what an aggressive beat from Velvet that won't net anything but a corpse resting inside of Church. There goes Velvet and one of the key anchors inside of Church. He's literally at half HP. Yep. <laughs> has lost more than half of his health now to Electro Claws on hatches. That is not what you want from your Maverick. No. <laughs> oh, what a C4. The thing is, Hugzord is running the shield. The shield protects the shield user from splash damage of C4, not the player that's sitting behind him. So GDN is barely alive, and a reset will only put him up at 20 HP. Hit will come in the pre fire, but Ponico is ready for him and just does not squeeze the trigger tightly enough. All in behind, Hugsword just staying in place. The mobile drone, I guess. They have one spot as well in the armory. The Valkyrie, do <laughs> what are you doing? He'll find the kill, now stand right in front of him. VNX with one, PZD on the refrag. Midi, live in the back, he'll fire into the Monty, he'll eat the damage, last alive, and PZD will take him out. Give me a second to breathe after this round, please. That one there again, aggression for Red Devils. 
Similarly to what we were seeing from NIP on their early defensive rounds that they were losing quite handily to FaZe, the problem is, is they also have the I'm not winning my gunfight syndrome, and it's costing them quite a lot in these defenses. Uh, first up was Velvet, then was Hit, and then it all kind of collapses. Yeah, Danny was there. a miss. And yeah, it was it was just a lot of missed shots, and I don't like this from Red Devils. I, I get that it's probably easy for them to read into the same thing I'm reading into, which is your aggression and your failed gunfights seem to be the culprit. Change something up. Swap it up, guys. Don't run your heads into a wall for three rounds in a row. Try and expand a little. There are three, I'd say four, but a lot of people hate bar. There's three viable bomb sites for sure on this map. Try and mix it up a little bit. It looks like Black Dragons are going to keep bringing the same composition on every site. They're going to commit to the Monte no matter what. Try and mix things up a little bit. Change the angles. I don't think just a shift in mentality in this is going to work because you're not hitting your shots right now. And I don't think running this into the ground is going to be all that fruitful for them. No. No. And, yeah, it's... We go back to that definition of insanity, right? Um, still, Hugzord playing the shield. He's been doing so much work. And actually, to, to expand a bit on your point, uh, Rob, moving to cash makes dealing with that Monty a bit easier because yeah. he's not 100% funneled through everything. The biggest position where he would be funneled up to two with the stairs and, you know, the back stairs and also um, the push in from garage. But in both ways, they're the operators to deal with that. You know, Echo and Maestro are banned, but you can definitely really use and abuse um, the the lesion. You can run the dock, which actually has has not been present at all. They're kind of relying and over relying on the Valkyrie, whereas maybe having that MP5 would help them with a bit longer damage or longer longer range damage because. You know, I think they're playing down here. They want to exploit the Kai to his maximum potential, but. Black Dragons are just kind of bypassing it, even if the hatches that are being held are held for quite a bit of time. Well, you could hear Moringa taking a little bit of damage, as is routine now, but uh, he's able to maintain at least 90 HP, and I don't think, again, he was able to pop the hatch with enough in that third tank to be able to completely destroy another hatch, but we'll have to wait and see. And I find it interesting as well that they're committing to the, the Maverick on Moringa to constantly open up the hatches when GDN isn't using the Thermite Charge to open up Church Wall at all. They're not bringing the Thatcher because of the fan. Um, but they're not doing anything with Church Wall, so why risk Moringa when you've already seen the aggression from Red Devils? Just use a Thermite Charge and open up the hatch after you have part of it open and shoot the Electro Claw. Yeah, but that's the thing, shooting the Electro Claw is more difficult than it seems to be. There's just, you can put it on so many different angles where it's not impossible to destroy at times just because of the range that it has on it. So I can't really fault them for that. I can't fault them for the Miss C4. Brow might have just wanted to keep it to deal with the Monty, but he's looking for, for actual damage. He looks through the hallway and actually maneuvers through it. The Maverick is spotted, but he's already done too much damage. Moringa given two free kills. Red Devils, oh man. It's really not helping here. Velvet on his own, and oh man, there's one player behind trying to fire in. Velvet will find one kill, but the pistol is up close, and the Monty turns away. The shield will protect him for just a bit more. Walks right into the bandit, fights against him, and they trade off one to one on the floor. There's two left alive here, VNX and Hit. Moringa will walk on in, they'll fire. PZD will find one kill. Panico with the last two on Hit and Velvet. Black Dragons, third round. Attacking downstairs and third round they put on the board. Copy paste every single round. And that's three for the attack so far. Not great. Like I said, changing up your mentality wasn't gonna fix the holes in the strategy. Red Devils don't take the aggressive peaks until they all peaked main hall at the end and walked straight into just an endless spray from Moringa at the AM4. It's difficult. It's very difficult if you're Red Devils to lose three consecutively on the defense. You've now guaranteed that the best case scenario is you run three in a row back. The next difficulty with that is, let's start out on CCTV Cash with this hypothetical thread. You win this, okay, it's 3-1. 
where do you go? Do you go back downstairs and try it oh, for no. a fourth time? No, you, you have go, to go for bedroom. You go gym bedroom. That's a difficult site to win, especially when the Maverick's available. Okay, let's even give them the benefit of the doubt. They win gym bedroom. They still gotta go back downstairs and win it somehow, just to draw even in the half, or they're going to bar stock, no. uh, an unproven site. You're pretty screwed here right now if you're Red Devils as far as your defensive capabilities. But we saw a very attacker-sided game just 45 minutes ago between yes. Ivy and FaZe. It isn't the end of the world here. You just need to bank on your attacks being absolutely killer if you're Red Devils. Yeah, and Cash was actually played much more than we've seen here at least so far. Yeah. Um, there you go. Abra was setting up that position. If you didn't know, you can use that, uh, that hole to vault through it. Uh, when mirror windows were prevalent on this site, you would always see a mirror window uh, either on the soft wall where you can vault over it. It's more of a crouch level or, you know, center level with a with a half open wall above it where you can vault over it. Or you can use it for C4 or you could have, uh, back in the day at least, a mirror window on the right hand side. It would expose you a lot of times to angles from, um, from the actual balcony, but, you know, it's kind of a risk to take because you're using it for uh, plays later on. And, what is this? We just hear Moringa screaming ah! over and over ah! and over again. And I ah! imagine he's up against a wall. He's up against some kind of electri electrified force, and it's probably VNX's Kaid Electro Claws. Ah! I mean, again, he's almost lost half his health in the process here, but they've done the take off the tops and bottoms of a reinforcement, and Panico will most likely buck open the remainder of the wooden barricade that holds up the out the exterior of that wall. Yeah, people didn't know. Like, if you Maverick the top and the bottom, it, it literally just makes the reinforcement disappear. So I think that's exactly what they're doing now. Devil's taking a little bit of damage inside of the rafters. This is an immediate contestion with Hugzord and a little bit of support coming in from down below from Abrey. First Docs will be able to utilize, but it's choking out more of his teammate than anything. He's cutting off complete visibility. Hugzord staying full shielded as Moringa tries to lance in some fire from outside, but here comes the ADS from Hugzord. The distraction is enough from the Mav holes on the wall. And now Abreu is the smoke downstairs inside of Lounge. Either have to commit to a flank with Panico holding it, or retreat back up the cash stairs to give support to the rest of the site that is now being barraged by Black Dragons. Notice one thing, Hugzord on the Monty is taking zero damage. No goo mines were present at all. That's not great. When you know that you're gonna play the dock and with how prevalent the Monty has been in the past three rounds, you always put your first two, even three goo mines spread along the catwalk before you run away. And that's what would be your focus because as a as a Legion player, you always wanna put your goo mines off the site and then closer and closer as the round progresses because you're gonna be playing closer to the site as it does. Midi will try to peek around for the Zolfias because he's already found one, not expecting the second. And that's at least the second kill. VNX with the AUG 8-3 in hand. 10 seconds left on the clock. Red Devils actually have the opportunity to do this, but Panico will get one kill. They run into the clock. They take him out. Hit will get one kill off of things on the Moringa. Now he'll walk into the Monty, who spotted him, drop the hatch, and try to play around from the opposite end through the stairs. Damage done now with Goo Mine onto the Monty, but a bit too late. Impact grenade launched, but will not connect. And the buck is ready on the top. Even vault into him. The Monty now blocking line of sight and access to the thermite turning around the wall. The Monty facing in as Ponica will go down. No need to worry about the thermite anymore. Impact grenade to the side, but GDN is a bit too far away. The Monty still again putting himself in a great position. The rotation hole. Hit will find one kill, but he's running out of time. He's gonna try to come in and melee the Monty with a fully extended shield is just not gonna give him any room to maneuver. And that should be the round. There you go. Time's up. Even, even if you got that kill. You got none left, hit. Unfortunately, in a 1v3, got so close and yet so far, and the fourth in a row here for Red Devils' opponents, Black Dragons. That's tough. That's a real tough scenario of Velvet getting a little distracted inside of the rafters as the dock, just allowing Hugzor to ADS him. Um, I'm surprised as well that Abreu didn't peak after the ADS from the Monte. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, timing there, like I said, Panico was holding the entrance from in behind that toolbox right beside the ladder. It's a rough scenario, and dear Lord, Red Devils are going downstairs again. Um, 
I think if you maintain rafters control a little bit longer there, or at least invest a little bit more utility into holding the rafters, make sure hit is close by to keep dropping a sea of lesion mines on those rafters stairs. It's a different story. I don't like the return to the basement. I honestly thought the Red Devil's setup was better upstairs. It just needs a little bit of tweaking to continue the stall out factor. The Maverick is still going to get the wall. They're still going to buck it open, but they didn't have a lot of visibility until you started shifting to angles that weren't immediate priorities. I'm trying to look here at BR6 to see the history between the two teams. And I mean, they, they've played, um, but it was a 0-0 zero zero at the end of it. It was inconclusive and on the, it was on the last patch, which is even, it was October 7th, which is even before the Rio finals. Mm. So we didn't even have mute SMG 11, etc. back then. So I don't think that the result is too important for us it's in not relevant. context. Yeah, it's been a while, um, too long for it to be really relevant. That's just because BR6 season is most, the majority of a year. Yep. Um, but it was 0-0, zero, zero, which, which meant that um, the two teams kind of tied on both maps. Whereas if you look at, at Pro League, it was it was a different story, you know. This, uh, play day number one, Black Dragons completely walked all over Red Devils in a 7-1 in Oregon, so. It seems to be trending that way again yeah. here on Clubhouse, considering, I mean, yes, all the hard breaches are available, which is a scenario we don't often see on Clubhouse. But come on, you can't win a single defense. It's all around. It's all around Red Devils banning the Thatcher to run the cod. That's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the extent of it. I mean, it's gonna have to again turn into Red Devils running it back all the way on these two defensive rounds, just to just to salvage the first half, and then on attack, absolutely turn into the monsters that Black Dragons currently are. And honestly, if, if you're Red Devils and you're playing those attacking rounds, which we haven't even gotten to yet, you still need to bank on Black Dragons making mistakes. Because that's how Red Devils have made it to this scenario they're in right now, is making mistakes. And Black Dragons are capitalizing, which is wonderful to see. Their capitalization on the mistakes, it's not massive mistakes, it's small mistakes, like this Nitro Cell really being hit or miss, and most of the time miss. And it just keeps happening every yeah. single round. This is literally the past three, well, the first three rounds in a nutshell. It just, that's it. I mean, Hugsor's already in. <laughs> Hasn't taken next to any damage. Moringa's got the hatches open. It looks like Velvet's gonna try and challenge this up front once again. The good news is Hit hasn't died inside of blue yet, and VNX is coming in support. But as I say that, VNX will fall. GDN and Panico grab two. That's a third for GDN. And now stuck in the corner, Velvet, nowhere to go. They all start falling. It's Midi alone in a 1v5 with the shotgun. He gets blistered by that M762 of PZD. And Black Dragon storming away with this. Red Devils looking like they have absolutely no hope. I think your streak's gonna be broken there, Rob. <laughs> okay, but how absolutely fantastic would it be oh, if it wasn't? Actually, I'd like to see that. Honestly, I I'd love to see Red Devils come back and send this the distance. But we're one round away on Black Dragon's side from at least guaranteeing themselves a point. I, I think it would take a miracle at this point. There's just it would. They're back downstairs. Oh my god. Oh no, and they've they've dropped hit to 50 HP in prep phase. Do you think this is a little bit of a tilt factor? It's under 50 HP. That's that's not good. That's even worse than what I said. And uh, Red Devils seem to be falling apart at the seams right now. This is kind of a mess. And it's very unfortunate, right? Because Red Devils have started off the season so well. Yeah, they, this they were in fourth story. place. Yeah, heading in today, they're in the fourth. This, this is not fourth place. This is out of relegation place right now. And I, I hate to say that. I hate to be so negative. But honestly, like... But they don't really have much to be talked about in a positive light in this certain match. I'm sure there's Red Devils out there, fans out there who are clamoring at the bit to yell at us and say, you know, what about this result? What about this result? I understand. 
what we need to do right now is focus on what's happening in front of us. And like I said, it really does look like it's Red Devils just coming apart at the seams. They cannot find any traction. They're running the same thing over and over again. There's zero adaptation. And they're playing against the same exact thing yep. that they've lost to for five rounds in a row. Yeah, it's and they've the, changed nothing. It's the lack of adaptation, like you just said. The lack of change, the lack of adaptation, that is the most concerning. Because the best of the best teams in the world adapt. They nonstop adapt. No matter what is happening in front of them, they are reacting to what they are seeing. Red Devils seem to have this mentality right now of, we're going to run this thing into the ground, and eventually it'll work, or we're going to get 7 0 And right now it's trending towards the 7-0. It's like, is the card actually doing anything for you? No, Moringa is like, yes, he's losing half his HP. I think he enjoys it. Time. I think he's, I Look, think he's man, having a blast with it. Yes, yeah, some people, you know, are into different things. Uh -oh. And, oh, oh, okay. I mean, Velvet's tried that multiple times, and he has not hit that shot. And then he tried to wide peek the hatch in round two and also got obliterated. So I don't recommend the aggression. Uh, hit losing a lot of HP has been that linchpin inside of blue round after round. Um, he hasn't been able to do anything from that position. No. There's always somebody walking in from oil pit and just dispatches him. And usually that's the buck. Yeah, Panico has had a fun time repeating the same kill over and over again, which is I'm going to walk in to oil pit. I'm going to crouch walk down the hallway and I'm going to shoot hit in the head. And it's been the same thing on repeat for four out of the five rounds. Don't. He's doing it. Don't. Oh, this is new. Ah. Okay. Why is it the team that's winning 5-0 that's making adaptations? They're like not losing, it isn't. We actually don't need to open another hatch, so... Yeah. Let's just go somewhere else. And they never use it. Okay. Monty's going to take a couple ticks of damage. Remember, the, the damage ticks are now down to 4 HP instead of 8. But in, in this case, it's, it, you know, you, you take a total of 18. And now you take an extra 10 damage. You just go back and... Set yourself back up. Hit will actually connect. Ponica will go down. A great start here, even with the player low on HP. But Moringa is ready. He'll find two kills. Walking in from the side. PZD now into the stairs. C4 thrown into the Monty, and it will not connect. Velvet, though, will find one kill to redeem himself. Midi taken away by GDN, and he'll go run directly to plant by Black Box as PZD dispatches Velvet. Six rounds in a row. Black Dragons. Well done. It looked kind of promising there for a second and then it all fall apart in the matter of I, I don't know two seconds maybe three kills in two seconds is that generous was it one and a half yeah look they changed sides at least okay the <laughs> so I must stress this as well always look on the bright side of life the only way <laughs> this ends in a tie is if 12 attacking rounds on Clubhouse are one in the same game. I don't think that has ever happened in any Pro League scenario ever. So we're either making records out here, or Red Devils are going back to the drawing boards, taking zero points out of this, and Black Dragons will separate themselves from the Pain and INTZ show at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the standings. Yeah, I mean, with this victory, Black Dragons blast off to 11 points, which is actually the exact worst scenario for Payne and 90s, who are sitting at five points apiece. The closest team to them will be five points away. What are you doing? Camera activated. Okay. 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 I. Yeah. That's I like nice. It. That's fine. I've never actually seen that before. No. Oh, he's gonna, oh, he's gonna spawn peek with it. Panico getting extremely aggressive and he'll get detected and scurry on back and reinforce right behind him. That's interesting because I forgot that the dirt walls were one of those that don't have studs in them. So you can actually make yourself a vault hole with a deagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by, by studs like the, the wooden. The wooden studs that you need a shotgun yes. to break open, yeah. Yeah, for example, the, the bank the bank uh, wall and basement. Yep. Know, the, ones, the one that with the deagle used to be a strategy before, where you would, sh you know, take out the metal parts of it between those studs. Mm -hmm. Reload! So, there you go. Hmm. There's a lot of effort being put on the, the uh, base and top floor from Black Dragons, defending on here. And they're, they, well, in their case, they're six rounds ahead. They can literally do whatever they want and just experiment. 
Well, there's there's a couple things from the Red Devils lineup that I like so far, which is that they have a Ying on hit and they have a Zofia on VNX. There's no Jaeger. No ADSs to stop any of those projectiles coming in. You've also probably got... Well, you probably might have had flashbangs on the Maverick, but now it's all fallen to hell. Hugzord and PZD will both grab kills. Abreu will at least trade one back onto PZD, but you've lost your Maverick. You've lost your IQ. Abreu taking a little bit of damage. He enters in, and he's being shredded in from inside lounge, and he'll vault over, still taking damage from the Legion Mine stuck in his leg. Throws out a flashbang in desperation to repel the initial entry in from lounge, and now taking an aggressive angle. The Candela's come flying out from hit, and it's panic setting in for Red Devils. The hatch was left soft. It was destroyed, and eased their way down here. The defense of Black Dragons. Only one Candela's still available, so there's not going to be a lot of effect on the armory. You can't just chuck two and blind it out completely. You really need to know what you're doing. VNX peeks on but can't find anything. Moringa will get one though. Hit taken away. No more candelas to be used. Abrao and VNX, the last two alive. The thermite is so low on HP, just trying to find the leg there in the back. But oh, he will, he will hit one. No, it doesn't even connect. He then gets taken out immediately down on the floor. VNX last alive. And the Diffuser is so far away, even if he picks up his teammate. The walls are completely soft because the defense opted to play at the top and Panico will get one as Moringa will finish off a brow and that's it. 7-0 are only one so far in this half. And I'm going to check, have we had a single 7-0 so far in LATAM? And I think we have not had... No. No. Te well, technically we had Liquid Phase. Because, oh my god, that pa oh, those skins. But, no, we technically have not had a 7-0. This is the first 7-0 for Latam ever in, in this entire season. The only time was January 15th when Liquid played FaZe and FaZe was having issues and because of Mother Nature, it kind of prevented them from actually playing, which technically yeah. amounts to a 7-0, even though they had actually won, you know, one or two rounds, yeah. FaZe that is. But, look, I'm going to throw it to you. Just Yeah? Yeah. All right. A lack of adaptation from Red Devils. Uh, a lack of, honestly, targeting weak points in the strategy. You see the same thing being run over and over and over again on the side of Black Dragons because it's working? If you're Red Devils there, you need to employ a little more counter striding instead of just committing to your own strategy and blindly having faith that one day it will work. Yeah, you, you literally changed nothing. Yeah. Uh, I was also having a bit of a stroke there because at the end, VNX was Sophia with an impact nade, could have... and the church wall was soft, and there were two people lined up in church. And If only the Thermite was, you know, down to help him out. And <sighs> Yeah. It, it okay. Just a mess of a game. A forgettable game for Red Devils. Hopefully they put it past them and they uh, they move on to continue what a great start to the season they had and just put this in the rearview mirror forever. Yeah, well, Black Dragons are now up. They're fifth place with 11 points and this is looking dire for Pain and INTZ down at position seven and eight. That's our second to last game. We still have one more to go though. It's the top two on the board. Immortals Team Liquid coming up in just a bit for all the fans. We hope that'll be as big of a banger as it promises theoretically. We're back in a bit. <laughs> 